If you're a young professional woman just entering her career, then whether it's a nosy relative or social media, I can bet you've had unsolicited comments made about your fertility. Why is fertility declining? I'm gonna be told that I can't have children. What is the optimal age for fertility? Now, because it isn't the 1920s, women make up a far higher proportion of the workforce. However, in some ways, it seems we have not evolved since the 20s because for a lot of people, women are still just seen as incubators and having a career is seen as a brief escape before they reach their ultimate destiny, birthing children. But there is only one thing that annoys me almost as much as all of that, all the misinformation that exists around fertility spread across social media. Today, in this video we are going to be breaking down all the myths and misinformation if you are new here then my name is Faye I'm a medical doctor working in London and from the intro it may have sounded like I have absolutely no interest in having children ever but that is not the case. On this channel, we focus on evidence-based solutions for the most common problems that you may face as a young woman. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, then make sure to hit the subscribe button just down there so you never miss a video. So let's start at the beginning. What even is fertility? Very simply, fertility is the ability to conceive and carry a pregnancy to full term. And if you've watched any of the Bridget Jones films, then you probably think that your fertility immediately drops off a cliff the moment the clock strikes midnight on your 35th birthday. 90s movies lie to us. Who would have thought? That is not the whole truth. Here's what the stats say. Out of 100 women trying to conceive under the age of 30, 85 of them will conceive in a year. By 30, this number does decrease to 75 out of 100. By 35, it's 66 out of 100. And by 40, it's 44 out of 100. So yes, fertility does decline with age but it's not the drop off a cliff that society makes us think and despite this the average age for parents in the UK is at a record high 30.9 years for women and 33.7 years for men. If you're a girlie in London then I'm sure you will have seen the dramatic increase in IVF adverts that I've seen on the tube over the last few months and this pressure on women to freeze their eggs in their 20s because of the impending doom of infertility often stems from outdated information rather than actual biological necessity. It's also important to remember who was gathering the data because historically research is mainly conducted by men which has obviously led to a heavy gender bias in medicine that still exists to this day. So while you can't stop the natural decline in egg count, knowing that the drop is gradual allows you to make informed decisions and not feel rushed into pursuing expensive options like like egg freezing. It's about turning anxiety into action and having the knowledge to take ownership over your future. Because I know some of you are settling for men based on this looming fear of your biological clock and science has hopefully showed you why that is a suboptimal decision. Unfortunately, infertility isn't just a concept created by IVF marketing teams. It is a very real struggle that so many women go through. However, what you really need to be doing is gaining a deep deeper understanding of your own personal reproductive timeline. This can look like answering the following questions. Have women or even men in my family struggled with infertility previously? Do you have relatives in your family who had healthy children that were conceived past the age of 35? Studies show that family patterns can provide important clues into your own fertility. You could consider personalized fertility testing because even though general statistics about fertility are useful, nothing beats data that is specifically tailored just for you. I've seen a couple fertility tests popping up on the market at the moment. You may have heard of fertility. From my personal research, fertility looks great. One that I cannot get behind is the day tampons that I've seen promoted as an insight into your fertility. The day tampons can provide useful information in other aspects of women's health, but one of the most important 
aspects of personalised fertility testing is testing of anti-Mullerian hormone, which can give you an indication of your egg count. So the number of eggs you may have left. This cannot be done from a tampon. Companies like Mojo also offer this fertility testing for men as well. But the accuracy of at-home testing can vary greatly due to human errors or processing errors. They just tell a part of the story and are often not that much help without analysis from a trained medical professional who can offer advice and support based on these results. If you opt for at-home testing, please consider the worst case scenario and what you will do with that information because any medical tests can be extremely anxiety inducing. And there is a chance that these tests could come back and tell you that you have very low egg reserves and not having a medical professional that you have access to to ask any questions you may have will make that situation so much harder. Three, ask yourself, do I have any inherited disorders or genetic markers that might impact my fertility? Research shows that genetic factors can impact ovarian reserve and egg quality. And genetic testing can sometimes reveal predispositions to conditions like premature ovarian failure, which is where a woman goes through menopause a lot earlier than normal or other reproductive challenges. This isn't about creating anxiety, it's about empowering you with information to make proactive informed decisions about your future. Now let's talk about something that never gets enough attention, male facility, because we're always talking about women's biological clock and what women should be doing to prepare for pregnancy, but never men. Sperm takes about 72 days to develop. What a man does in the three months before conception can have a huge impact on the quality of sperm and ultimately the pregnancy. Studies have shown that men who smoke not only compromise their own health, but also increase the risk of birth defects or miscarriages, even if their partner is not a smoker. But it doesn't stop there. Advanced paternal age is also linked to genetic abnormalities. That's right, even though Robert De Niro was a father last year, that doesn't mean that men don't also have a biological clock. Okay, they might still be able to produce sperm when women don't have any eggs left, but there is an age-related decline in the quality of the sperm. That shock we do not hear talked about enough. Other factors like obesity, poor diet, chronic illnesses, and poor overall health in men have been linked to abnormal sperm. That can cause complications like preterm birth, low birth weight, and even increase the chances of the baby dying after it's born. Now here's something interesting. Fertility rates have been declining in places like England and Wales, but it's not just about biology. Women, especially working women who make up 72% of all women in the UK, are delaying having children for very legitimate reasons. Career growth is still at odds with maternity leave policies. And when women come back after their maternity leave is over, workplace support for new mothers just is not good enough. I had a very enlightening conversation with one of my colleagues who had just come back from maternity leave where she, a doctor, working in the NHS, had been told that there was no place for her to breast pump in the hospital and they suggested she use her breast pump in the toilets. Yes, farm her food for her baby in a place where people defecate because that's hygienic and that's not a unique story. Employers up and down the country make it so hard for women to come back to work to the point that they often think, what is even the point when I'm going to be behind in my career because of the time that I've taken off and not understood by my employer? And let's not forget the finances of it all. The increasing cost of living and dwindling financial security is making parenthood an increasingly difficult choice for so many young people. If you're like me and for a long time you had absolutely no clue about personal finances and don't have the bank of mum and dad to fall back on, I have a video on my millionaire payday routine that I will link here that you might find helpful. So what does all of this mean? Many women are delaying having children because the systems to support mothers just aren't there within our society. Solutions like egg freezing and IVF as a response to increasing maternal age are plasters over a much deeper wound within a society that needs to do better. There is more that we can do to not put women in these ridiculously impossible positions of choosing between their career or risking infertility. Okay, that is my rant over. How do we actually improve fertility? 
You've probably heard all the regular advice, eat a healthy diet, exercise, avoid smoking and excessive alcohol. And I can't lie, sometimes the basics are the best. But let's talk about some factors you may not have considered. For women, hormone health is key. PCOS and endometriosis are underdiagnosed and can impact fertility. Research shows that women with well-managed PCOS who maintain balanced insulin and hormone levels have significantly improved ovulatory function. This means increased and more regular release of eggs, which equals higher chances of getting pregnant. It's crucial to get proper screening and treatment because even small changes to your hormone levels can significantly boost fertility. Another factor that is often forgotten, STIs. You should be getting regular STI tests, even if you're in a long-term relationship, because I'm not saying your man's cheating, but wouldn't it be horrible if he did and then he made you infertile in the process. A lot of STIs don't have symptoms, so you may not even know that you have one and can sometimes cause scarring of the reproductive tract. By catching STIs early and treating them effectively, you can prevent this damage and preserve your fertility in the long run. There's also a lot of chatter about whether hormonal contraception impacts fertility. The good news is that fertility typically returns back to normal after discontinuing long-term contraceptive use, apart from in the progesterone injection, which can take a to a year for fertility to return back to normal. But some research does suggest that long-term use of hormonal contraceptives may be perceived as impacting fertility because the contraceptives might be masking underlying reproductive issues like PCOS, which then only becomes apparent when you are trying to conceive. Sleep quality also directly impacts reproductive hormones, yet no one talks about it. Studies show that disrupted sleep patterns can lower the levels of key hormones such as estrogen and progesterone, ultimately affecting ovulation, which is the release of the egg. I have a video here all about my evidence-based nighttime habits for better sleep. And I also have the same information on an Instagram post that I will put here if you would like to follow me on there. My username is just Dr. Febe. But if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video to improve your sleep, it's something I've recently started, which is doing one of the headspace meditations every night before bed. They're about five minutes long and 90% of the time I'm asleep before the five minutes is over. I'm someone who really struggles with lying in bed with racing thoughts and so far these meditations has been the only thing that has helped silence them. Now for men, because we've already established, despite what society says, they do actually matter in the process. Men need to be making sure that they are getting enough folate and zinc because studies show that a deficiency in zinc can compromise sperm motility and morphology. You may have seen little animations with like sperms with two heads or two tails or not moving their tail properly. That's what I mean. While not enough folate is linked to decrease in the number of sperm. So it's important that men are prioritizing their nutrition before conception too. Regular exercise is also extremely important. It boosts testosterone, but not all exercise is created equal. Excessive cycling can actually negatively impact male fertility because of the excessive heat and pressure on the scrotum from the bike seat. One study even showed that men who cycle five hours or more a week had a lower sperm count and poor sperm motility. And speaking of temperature, hot baths and saunas are a no-go. Testicles are designed to operate at a slightly cooler temperature than the rest of the body, which is why they are outside the body, not inside. And excessive heat, like from a hot bath or a sauna, can disrupt the optimal temperature needed for healthy sperm production. The good news is this is usually reversible with reduced exposure. And finally, for my gym boys, steroids are an absolute no-go. Steroids can drastically reduce sperm count to zero in many cases. So now you know the truth about infertility, the stuff that no one tells you, and maybe it's motivated you to live a healthier life in 2025, then you may want to watch this video just here or this video just below it, which has been recommended just for you based on what you're interested in. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you in the next video.